Hey everybody, Haku here with my uh, review for Tower of God Chapter 401 or Season 2 Episode 321. So uh, yeah, like I said, if I thought that I was rushing it on Tuesday, I was going to push this back a day, so here we are on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Chapter 401. I liked this one, we moved the story forward quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, it's just a good arc chapter. Nothing super, super shocking or special uh, happened yet. Um, so starting off at the beginning to talk about it part by part. So we see quite a bit, like quite a lot of recap panels actually, of, um, of White just blowing away this army. Uh, then we see that Chi or um, Chon He saved Dorian, and her power actually looks really awesome. I like the way that Chon He or Chon He's power looks. Um, she has this. Okay, they looked like observers, but apparently they're a spear somehow, and the spear is called Sylphide. Uh, Dorian then recalls Pollock, who got pretty messed up by the attack, but like I said in the live reaction, we don't really know how Shinwei worked that much, so maybe he'll just regenerate since his body can be condensed into Shinsu to put into a tank. I guess it can just regenerate back into what it looked like before. Um, he notes that White is squadron commander level. White is at the level of Caliban. Um, but uh, White used all his power up with that attack and then gets captured. Um, Drac captures Sachi's group then. Uh, we see that um, Sawa, back with Bomb's group and uh, the train car that was teleported into the station, we see that there's a group there we know that two groups had showed up before, but one of those groups is a bunch of um, Zahard and the Ten Families. They're sponsored regulars, but the other group is actually Sowa and some of the station's people. So Sowa is trying to take in Bomb's group over Zahard's regulars, and that was kind of a distinction there what, that makes me think it could be a plan by Li Jiawun, because his entire dream was to make this a safe haven for regulars. But, uh, so it would be out of character for him as a person to deny these regular safe haven or to give them over to Zahard's army. So, even though he's maybe bluffing in front of So Young, maybe Jawoon has his own plan in order to help them or something, maybe even just figure out what's going on. Uh, but it's interesting that he actually had his own group that seemed adamant on taking them themselves rather than letting Zahard's allied regulars take them. Um, then we see Soyoung finds Levy at the controls where he killed everyone. She screams and that's audible even to where Bomb's group is. So Warian tells Bomb to go save her in his head somehow or another. Uh, there's a lot of ways to communicate. It's maybe some sort of pocket communication. Um, then we see uh, Boro, Sachi, Barrow, and Rachel in prison. I make the distinction that we saw those four. Uh, we can also assume that Yura possibly, if they didn't say, oh, she's from the Ha family, give her a chance, um, as well as uh, Traveler is probably there too. Uh, but we didn't see either of them. Uh, and we learned that Drac actually took Irude because, of course, they're family members. We see a high ranker prison that was designed by the, um, what is it? It was designed by the workshop, and uh, both White and Karaka are there. And one thing that I noticed when going back through to, going back through to reread and take notes and stuff, Karaka's suit, that one shot, I can't tell, maybe it's just because his eyes are closed or something, but it looked like maybe the suit was empty. So maybe that was part of the Shinsu dissolving stuff, or Yuri and Evan's plan was that maybe they have that suit captured and the real Karaka is out somewhere, uh, but no clue. Then uh, from there, I also like that we have these different places. We have wherever the high ranker prison is, probably on the same ship where the normal prison is, but we have characters that need to be rescued on one of the on one of the army's ships. We have the station going on. We have these different places where characters are going to have to travel between and it adds more depth and more excitement to the arc, I think. So I actually like that we have that and it's not just all in the same place. And we have a lot of different character groups and factions and a lot of them we're not sure where they're going to align themselves yet. Like uh, Stua Arthur and his group. Um, 
there's been kind of a bit, like their introduction was a bit special, so they've kind of had something special made of them. How are they going to side here? Um, and same with like Li Jiawun and such. Um, but from there we see Chion He and Yuri, and we establish that they have a relationship prior to this. Uh, not just that they know of each other, but that they actually have some sort of relationship. Uh, Chion He was always stronger when they were, I guess, kids, or at least younger. Um, and Chion He explains the situation to Yuri, uh, and then Yuri tries to cover for it, of course, but it doesn't really work out that well because Joan, he says she's going to follow orders and bring everyone back. And her plan is to execute hostages until the group in the station leaves the station, which is kind of a terrible plan because you can't really bring them back if they're dead, or what if you kill one that's actually kind of important? Or she also brings up that it, they're going to need to be tried and found to see if they're guilty or not. So killing them one at a time doesn't actually seem like a good thing for the army to do, or like a very good plan at all. Um, and in addition to it not being a good plan because of that, it also shows that she wouldn't have much faith at all in their allied regulars to capture the group that was on the station. Um, but it not being a good plan might not matter because it, it might not be a good plan on purpose. Uh, because Yuri can tell that it's actually a trap for her. Um, we see that Chionhee actually mentioned when she was talking about it that it's clear that their allies are close and that's why they would come to save them. And Yuri can tell that she suspects her. So it's obvious that the way she's doing all this is to see if they are their companions and if they do care about each other, then that would be something that would show Yuri's true colors. Would she work to save them or not? Um, or would she try some way to save them? So it's basically a trap to try to see if Yuri is truly with them or not, more than it is to actually capture the regulars. At least that's the way I feel and that's the way I thought it was presented. Uh, then we see that Levy's curse is affecting Soyoung because she didn't answer him quick enough. I mean, just answer him. Say, no, I wasn't planning on doing that. Even if it's a lie, I mean, we don't know. Not answering kills you. We know that much. So answering wrong, or lying, maybe it may be answering wrong or lying is at least better than dying because you didn't answer at all. I have no clue how the curse works, but the curse is affecting Soyoung. Bomb shows up and interrupts it and is obviously a little put off by all the dead bodies around. Um, and then at the very end we learn from Chionhee, or a message to Chionhee, that the assistant squadron commander and Division 1 are arriving. And we get a look at the, um, the assistant squadron commander, Elpathian, who looks like another Power Rangers villain. Uh, there was no blog post this week. See, you basically just said, hey, not feeling all that great, not going to do the normal type of blog post this week, going to take a week off, up, off from it, and it's good. See, you needs to have more of a break here and there. Um, and so, yeah, some more general thoughts. So for the actual army's hierarchy, I think we've gotten a clearer picture of it now, and Akash Panda commented on the live reaction. I think that their... Um, their idea of the hierarchy is probably pretty much right because it pretty much lines up what from what I myself gathered from this chapter and that's that of course the squadrons are the highest uh, order and we're seeing squadrons like uh, we're seeing squadron 4 right now that has the Kalavan as the commander and the assistant commander would be Elpathian and then beneath squadron would be division. We've seen division two up until now and now we're getting division one uh, and of course division two's commander is uh, Chion He and assistant commander is Dorian Frog and then beneath that the next level beneath that I would say is company because so we have the second company of the second division of the fourth squadron is led by uh, Fonsa called Drac and then somewhere beneath company, there's also regiment and battalion, because regiment and battalion were both brought up. Um, we saw leaders for both regiments and battalions, but the lead, yeah, the regimental leader and the battalion leader were both some of the ones that got one shot by white there. So they're obviously on the weaker end of things. And it kind of makes sense that we have a high ranker that's 
presumably incredibly strong, like Kalavana's Slayer level and all of that. Um, so we have like Commander level High Ranker, and then we have a uh, whatever Chone he is, the um, the Division, yeah, Squadron Commander level High Ranker. Then we have a um, wow, what? Sorry, Division level Commander High Ranker, and then. For the one under division was company, right? Yeah, company, we have an advanced ranker, so I guess that's the sort of level of their leaders. And regiment and battalion, I guess they're just normal rankers, and that explains why white would just take them out. So they're not that big a deal. Not sure which order the two are in hierarchy-wise. I would think that regiment is above battalion, but it could work either way. Um, regiment is above battalion. Could work either way, though. Uh, one thing I like, though, about this chapter and where it's taking the story is that there's this overarching uh, Yuri versus Chonhi setup where, of course, we're going to see even rankers fighting each other, we're going to see regulars fighting each other, but it seems like we're going to have a lot of Yuri versus Chonhi stuff, like the regulars and the smaller rankers working under Chonhi versus Yuri's allies, and it's going to kind of be the psychological game, too, where Yuri's going to have to decide whether she's going to stand with them, like, kind of in the shadow, sort of, just helping them out without being obvious about it, or if she's going to just blatantly turn on Chonhi and help them out. So I like that we had this cool Yuri versus Chonhi setup, and we learned that, of course, Chonhi always beat her as a child. Well, that didn't sound right. Always was the victor, the stronger between the two as a child. Um, which means, of course, that's great setup for, oh, now things are changed, and I'm a big girl now, and Yuri's going to beat her. Again, like, in the, uh, victory sense. Um, so, uh, yeah. Also, Bomb met Levy sooner than I expected him to. Um, I mean, it's not like I just expected him, like, at the end of the arc to meet him, but it's kind of early in the arc, that, or earlier in the arc than I expected for the two of them to face off. Like, we haven't even got any of the small setup fights. And surprisingly enough, what if Levy is a small setup fight and there are stronger ones later? Doubt it, though. Doubt this is going to be super conclusive. Uh, they're probably going to have to uh, separate for one reason or another for now. Uh, so yeah, as a, I loved it, and as a score as a whole, I'd give it 8.5 Power Ranger Villains out of 10. I thought it was a really enjoyable chapter. We got a lot of information and a lot of setup for the arc. Uh, but yeah, just not a ton of huge shocking stuff or really game-changing stuff has happened yet. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. I wonder if we'll be seeing more divisions um, within Squadron 4 or more... Um, or more of what these little smaller, uh, these smaller level uh, groups are doing. Since we're seeing so many of the larger level groups, it feels like you, you should see more of the smaller level ones. But either way, uh, we'll see how that goes. And in addition, it made me think too, when I was like thinking about all this, taking notes and stuff, the one high ranker dude, uh, Yolker, Yolkner, Yolker, was that his name? And then there was Tinker Yolche, who I think was just a normal ranker. But um, Yolker was a high ranker who was a second-tier servant of Kalavan. So that's nowhere in this normal hierarchy. He's just a servant, and there are only a thousand high rankers. So to have one of those as a servant is really weird. And to have it as a second-tier servant, if he's second-tier, then what's a first-tier servant look like? Like, if you have a high ranker to be a second-tier servant... I don't know. I, I feel like that's too low a position to give to a high ranker. So it's going to be really weird when we actually get to see first rank ones, I guess. Um, especially knowing that Chonhi, I think Chonhi's somewhere between 500 and 1000 when it comes to, um, I don't know where this was confirmed, but I thought I read that. This, that's where she is in the whole ranking, somewhere from 500 to 1000. And if that's the case, then there are a lot of people even stronger than what is a, uh, what is a, hold on, division, division, what is a division level, um, a division level commander. Sorry I get so confused with that, it's just that there's no real way to know how great these translations are, and they're really, the words do not easily denote their, um, 
their importance. Because I, I would say division should be one of the most important things, or battalion should be one of the most important things, and yet the highest level thing is translated as squadron, and squadron sounds like it should be one of the smallest level groups. Um, so this whole hierarchy, the, the translations and the wording used, uh, just doesn't easily denote where they are in this um, hierarchy. But either way, that's it for my review this week. I uh, don't know if I'll be doing the hot Q&A discussion this week because I might be taking the hot Q&A off this week since I have so many month I have like five monthly series videos to do this week uh, plus new anime starting up. I might be reviewing like three of, or at least one of those up to three even. Um, so since I'm doing so many more videos than usual this week in specific, I might take the week off for the hot Q&A. So because of that, I might be, I don't know, might save the discussion for next week. But you know whenever we do the hot Q&A, I always have like 20, 30 minutes of Tower of God discussion. But either way, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Like if you did like the video, comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it and all that. Subscribe for more Tower of God, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And uh, if you want to link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us on Discord, just ask and I'll give you a link uh, to the server. It's free and open for anyone. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.